with an 8 a.m. intention, which is Mary and Joseph Lumetti. Later today, there will be private masses celebrated for Ramon Lantigua and also for Lawrence McDonald, which are, are our Sunday intention. Today is the second Sunday of Easter, so happy Sunday. It's a very special Sunday. It's called Divine Mercy Sunday, Divine Mercy Sunday. And so as you see, we have the image of the Divine Mercy here, uh, which was the image revealed to St. Faustina Kowalska. Uh, she was a nun from the early 1900s, uh, who was really, um, who Jesus revealed to her directly uh, what his mercy was all about. She, she didn't have that uh, formal theological training. She had direct revelations from Christ, and many of you maybe have uh, seen or read uh, her diary where she speaks about these revelations. Uh, and in one of the revelations of Christ, uh, he asked specifically for the second Sunday of Easter to be named the Divine Mercy Sunday so that uh, the whole world uh, could know and draw close to his infinite mercy his exact revelation to her, my daughter, tell the whole world about my inconceivable mercy. I desire that the Feast of Mercy be a refuge and a shelter for all souls, and especially for poor sinners. On that day, the very depths of my tender mercy are open. I pour out a whole ocean of graces upon those souls who approach the fount of mercy. So brothers and sisters, today we draw ourselves and unite ourselves to the mercy of Christ, uh, saying that prayer, Jesus, I trust in you, that simple prayer, perhaps taking some time today to pray a chaplet of divine mercy, that God may have mercy on us and on the whole world. Hoy es el segundo domingo de la Pascua, y como muchos de ustedes saben, es la, el domingo de Divina Misericordia, que es un domingo establecido por Juan Pablo II, eh, por la influencia de San Faustina Kowalska. Y hoy oremos eh, muy... Eh, muy directamente por la misericordia de Dios sobre nosotros y sobre el mundo entero. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been won, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lectura del Libro de los Hechos de los Apóstoles en los, primeras, en los primeros días de la Iglesia, todos los hermanos acudían asiduamente a escuchar las enseñanzas de los apóstoles, vivían en comunión fraterna y se congregaban para orar en común y celebrar la fracción del pan. Toda la gente estaba llena de asombro y de temor al ver los milagros y prodigios que los apóstoles hacían en Jerusalén. Todos los creyentes vivían unidos y lo tenían todo en común. Los que eran dueños de bienes o propiedades los vendían y el producto era distribuido entre todos según las necesidades de cada uno. Diariamente se reunían en el templo y en las casas partían el pan y comían juntos con alegría y sencillez de corazón. Alababan a Dios y toda la gente los estimaba. Y el Señor aumentaba cada día el número de los que habían de salvarse. Palabra de Dios, te alabamos, Señor.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is already to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than the gold that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you yet believe in him. You rejoice with an indescribable and a glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your soul. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. With your a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hands into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand, and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? 
Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to Lord Jesus. As I mentioned in the beginning, Jesus describes his mercy to St. Faustina as something that's inconceivable, something that's inconceivable. And so we have this feast today in order to help us conceive of his mercy. It's hard for us to understand God's mercy. You've heard me say it before, but I'll say it again, it's hard for us to understand His mercy because we live in a world today that permits everything. We permit everything. And we forgive nothing. We forgive nothing. The world laughs, public opinion laughs at the idea of sin. Sometimes we scoff at the idea of virtue, of morality, of values. But then when somebody does sin, when somebody does break away from the norm, we mercilessly, mercilessly crucify them. We crucify them in the papers, we crucify them in the news, we crucify them on late night shows. And it's so unbelievably twisted. And it makes us realize truly how inconceivable mercy is. Today is a blessed day because God Jesus wanted this day, wanted this day for us to understand his mercy. And we have this beautiful, simple prayer, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. There are so many graces that come with this day. Normally we are called to go to confession on this day and receive communion. Obviously we're home and we can't do that. Uh, so the church is calling us to make a perfect act of contrition today. Take some time today and make a perfect act of contrition and put yourself in God's loving mercy and then you go to confession as soon as you can once all this passes and we can come together once more to receive those wonderful graces that God wants to bestow on us in his mercy. I want to share a story with you about one of my favorite saints in the Catholic Church uh, because it's a story that really touches on this idea of God's inconceivable mercy. It's of a young girl who was very much in touch with Jesus' inconceivable mercy, uh, and she showed it in her life. Her name is Saint Maria Goretti. Saint Maria Goretti. I'm sure many of you uh, have heard of her uh, at some point, uh, but maybe you're not aware of how, how powerful her story is. Uh, Maria was born to a poor farming family in the year 1890, right near uh, the eastern coast of Italy. Her father died when she was young. Uh, she was about nine years old when her father died, and so her family, to make ends meet, had to share a, a home with another family, with the Serenellis. Now, there was a boy in the family who was a little bit older, Alessandro, and he would constantly pester and bully uh, Maria. When Maria was 11 years old, uh, Alessandro Serenelli, who was 20, uh, tried to rape her and tried to, to violate her. Maria was a young girl, very, very devoted to her family and very devoted to God. Uh, and she told Alessandro, she fought him off, uh, reminding him uh, that it's a sin, that what he's doing is a sin. And, 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 and she fought him, she fought him off, telling him that she would rather die. And Alessandro, in his uh, passion, in his crime of passion, uh, took those words and let rage get the best of him. He stabbed 11-year-old Maria 14 times. 14 times. Maria was rushed to the hospital by carriage uh, in Mituno, which was a little ways away, uh, 
And on her deathbed, not realizing that she was going to die, the surgeon who was working on her said, remember me when you are in paradise. And Maria said, well, who knows who's going to get there first? And the surgeon said, you will, Maria. And Maria looked at him and said to the surgeon, I will remember you when I get to paradise. And upon realizing that she was going to die, she showed concern for her mother, who obviously would have been extremely uh, distraught in this situation. Uh, and most miraculously, she didn't die until the next day. Uh, and right before she died on her deathbed, she forgave Alessandro as well. And this is what she said. She said she wanted to see him in heaven with her. This is an 11-year-old girl, mind you, who was just stabbed 14 times, rushed to the hospital, forgiving Alessandro, saying that she wants to see him in heaven with her. Alessandro was captured and uh, sent, uh, sentenced to prison for 30 years. He was completely unrepentant at first. And about eight years into his prison term, he has a dream, a vision. And in his dream, he's in a garden, and he sees young Maria walking towards him. Maria gathers some lilies and hands them to Alessandro. Alessandro takes the lilies, and they burn in his hands. They burn in his hands. When he wakes up from this dream, when he wakes up from this vision, he's a changed man. Changed man. He repented immediately of his crime, and he reformed his entire life. He ended up being released just a little bit early from his prison term. And upon being released 27 years later, the first thing he does is he goes to Maria's mother, Assunta. Assunta. He goes to her on Christmas Day. He kneels in front of Assunta, begging for forgiveness and begging for for mercy. And this is the reply of Maria's mother. If my daughter can forgive you, who am I to withhold forgiveness? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? In 1950, when Pope Pius XII declared Maria Goretti a saint in heaven, it was the most packed that Vatican Square had been at the time. She was the youngest to be named a saint at the time. Not only was Maria's mother present at the celebration with Maria's siblings, but so was Alessandro Serenelli, the repentant sinner. This man, Alessandro, went on to live the rest of his life in a Franciscan monastery where he humbly served as a receptionist and a gardener. There's a wonderful movie about Maria Goretti, and at the end of the movie, uh, the, the actor who played the parish priest, this is how the movie ends. He says this, he says, There is no injustice, misery, or suffering that can defeat the strength of a pure heart and true forgiveness. My friends, I know that these saint stories can sometimes seem outrageous or unrealistic or inconceivable. And this story of Maria Goretti probably wouldn't have meant much to me if I hadn't actually been to the place of Maria's tomb and prayed with her where she is buried. It wouldn't have meant as much if I hadn't actually been in the hospital room where she died. I remember I was, I was in uh, Natuno, Italy, and it was closed, and I went to knock on the door of the nuns, and I said, hey, I'm, I'm a priest, can I pray in the room? Uh, it's now a chapel, the room where she died, and sister was so happy to let me in, and I spent uh, maybe an hour there, just sitting there, contemplating this reality, which the idea of mercy is so inconceivable, just trying to sit with it, understanding what Maria understood. She was a very real person, with a very real understanding of God's mercy. Uh, that understanding contradicts so much about popular opinion. In our world, what mother in their right mind could possibly forgive the attempted rapist and murderer of her daughter? It sounds completely absurd, completely absurd, unless if we understand it within the context of who God is. 
One of the first things that Jesus tells his disciples after the resurrection we heard today in the gospel. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. God's saving action in the world by dying and rising was completely unmerited. We didn't do anything to merit the gift of Christ's salvific work. He united himself to our suffering humanity and he raised us up by inviting him, by inviting us into the life of his resurrection. God's mercy is totally free, totally available to all of us. And if we want to live in the freedom, in the love of God, the freedom of purity of heart of God, we need to begin now, Divine Mercy Sunday, to learn about forgiveness. When we retain the sins of others, it doesn't only keep them in prison, we imprison ourselves. We imprison ourselves with shame, with anger, with resentment. There have been some people who have made an entire livelihood out of accusations, resentments, and vengeance. My prayer for those people is that they can find freedom one day. Friends, mercy is hard. Mercy is hard. But ultimately, it's a gift. It's a gift. We need to pray for mercy. We need to pray for God to have mercy on the world for the atrocities that it commits against Him. We need to pray to God to open our own minds and hearts to be able to understand His mercy so that we can live it out ourselves. To finish, I just want to share with you uh, what Alessandro Serenelli had written as part of his will. He died in the year 1970 at 87 years old. And these are the words of this man who experienced God's mercy through Maria and through her mother. Listen to the words that he says at the end, towards the end of his life. I'm nearly 80 years old. I'm about to depart. Looking back at my past, I can see that in my early youth, I chose a bad path which led me to ruin myself. Listen to what he says here. My behavior was influenced by print, mass media, and bad examples which are followed by the majority of young people without even thinking. Have things changed? This was 130 years ago that he was writing this. My, influ my behavior was influenced by print, mass media, and bad examples which are followed by the majority of young people without even thinking. And I did the same. I wasn't worried. There were a lot of generous and devoted people who surrounded me, but I paid no attention to them because a violent force blinded me and pushed me toward a wrong way of life. When I was 20 years old, I committed a crime of passion now, that memory represents something horrible for me. Maria Goretti, now a saint, was my good angel, sent to me through providence to guide and save me. I still have impressed on my heart her words of rebuke and of pardon. She prayed for me. She interceded for her murderer. Thirty years of prison followed. If I had been of age, I would have spent all my life in prison. I accepted to be condemned because it was my own fault. Little Maria was really my light, my, prote my protectress. With her help, I behaved well during the 27 years of prison and tried to live honestly when I was again accepted among the members of society. The brothers of St. Francis, Capuchins from Marsh, welcomed me with angelic charity into their monastery as a brother, not as a servant. I've been living with their community for 24 years, and now I am serenely waiting to witness the vision of God, to hug my loved ones again, and to be next to my guardian angel 
and her dear mother, Asunta. I hope this letter that I wrote can teach others the happy lesson of avoiding evil and of always following the right path like little children. I feel that religion with its precepts is not something we can live without, but rather it is the real comfort. Religion is the real strength in life and the only safe way in every circumstance, even the most painful ones of life. Religion, the real strength in life, and the only safe way in every circumstance, even the most painful ones of life. My friends, this is the witness and the power of what mercy can do for us. Today, together with St. Faustina Kowalska, with St. John Paul II, with St. Maria Goretti, with her mother Assunta, with Alessandro Serenelli, let us turn to Jesus today and live by the wisdom of that simple divine mercy prayer. Merciful Jesus, I trust in you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us bring our prayers before our merciful and loving Lord. Oremos para la Iglesia. We pray for the Church, that as the body of the risen Christ here on earth, God's Holy Spirit may guide us in proclaiming the truth and hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. No, Lord, no, our no, prayer. No. Oremos por paz y justicia en todo el mundo. We pray for peace and justice in the world. May Easter grace be with all nations and peoples in turning away from division. Let us pray to the Lord. No, 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 no. Oremos por todos que eh, luchan para, uh, para sobrevivir en este mundo por el, con el trabajo. We pray for those who struggle each day to make ends meet. May God grant them a spirit of fortitude. Let us pray to the Lord. No, 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 no. Oremos por todos que han sido re renacido por las aguas del bautismo. We pray for all who have been reborn in the waters of baptism or joined us at the table of the Lord this Easter season. May the risen Christ be their rock and their guide. Let us pray to the Lord. No, Oremos para todos los que han fallecido en el nombre de Dios. We pray for all who have died. May they share with the saints the reward of eternal joy. Let us pray to the Lord. No, and we pray for any special petitions we may have. We continue to pray for our parish, uh, our community, especially those who have been afflicted by the coronavirus, for the Nieles family and the Isip family. We pray for all who have been ill or all who have lost jobs. May the Holy Spirit come and console them and be with them during this difficult time. Let us pray to the Lord. No, I pray. And let us pause a moment and pray and offer our own petitions in silence to our merciful Lord. Almighty and eternal God, as we celebrate this Divine Mercy Sunday, we ask you to hear our prayers through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen.
and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord have sacrificed under your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our own dwellings and God of all ages. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. It is a man to the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me
Dios, sino la fe de tu iglesia. Y conforme a tu palabra, concédele la paz y la unidad, tú que vives arenas por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. La paz del Señor esté con todos ustedes y con su espíritu. Hermanos, eh, let us exchange a sign of peace with one another.
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Antes de la bendición final, quiero decir, eh, discúlpame porque hice la homilía todo en inglés. Yo sé que es una misa bilingüe, eh, pero era una homilía bastante eh, larga, entonces quería cortarlo un poco. Eh, pero hablé de la misericordia de Dios, sobre todo en la historia de Santa María Goretti. Si no conocen la Santa María Goretti, por favor buscan su historia porque es una historia increíble de, de misericordia y una, una niña chiquita que recibió este don de Dios eh, para manifestar esa misericordia en el mundo en una manera muy concreta, una manera que es muy difícil de comprender, pero si lo comprendemos en, en comunión con Dios y la misericordia que Él tiene para nosotros, entonces nosotros también podemos aplicar ese, esa misericordia al mundo. Entonces hoy, el, el domingo eh, de Divina Misericordia, eh, oremos a Dios que tenga misericordia eh, en el mundo y, y que nos enseñe y abre nuestros corazones y mentes para recibir y manifestar y compartir su misericordia a los otros. Brothers and sisters, it's, it's hard to do this. Um, virtual masses, uh, we talk every day about how we can't wait to be united with you and we know um, it's, uh, the world's going through difficult times and we're in this together, uh, we're in this fight together, we're in solidarity with basically the whole world. Um, and so we encourage you uh, to continue uh, fervently in your prayers um, and maintain communion with one another. Uh, me and Father Thomas have, I don't want to speak for him, but we've both been edified by the communication we've had with you. Uh, we appreciate the phone calls. Uh, we've been calling some of you as well, uh, just to stay in touch and, and uh, in communication, uh, make sure uh, everyone's doing okay. Um, we've put it in the bulletin that if there are any needs, Uh, in the community, whether it be uh, groceries or whatever, uh, always feel free to reach out and, and we'll do our best to coordinate efforts either with us ourselves or with others that we know in the community that can help out. Um, but always stay in communication, never feel that you are alone. I know some of you might feel lonely or depressed right now, um, but never feel that uh, you are alone. Remember that, that God is with you, Christ is always present with you. Uh, you can always uh, call us here at the rectory, you can always call one of your brothers and sisters from the parish. Uh, I'm sure they would welcome your, your phone call and your But let us continue uh, with our prayers, with our faith, with our hope, uh, with our charity. Continue to pray for our leaders, uh, for our uh, leaders of authority, our, our medical professionals uh, who have been doing an incredible job. Uh, we, we applaud them and, and laud them for the work that they do, um, especially those in our own uh, nursing home right here in St. Anne's. We work very closely with those in the nursing home at St. Anne's. Uh, it's, a very gift to be, it's a very good gift to be close with them and united with them in prayer. So we ask you to continue to keep the Sisters of St. Joseph there who, who work so diligently uh, for the residents uh, and the residents and their families as well uh, in, your, in your prayers uh, and in your thoughts. Uh, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work, You have received the gift of everlasting freedom. Make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God.